Okay, listen, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent looks like a blast, and it looks like you had fun making it. I want to hear about you and uh, Pedro's time on set together and establishing the dynamic between these two characters. Pedro, see, uh, I had never met him before, but the, the funny thing is when I read the script and I imagined the Javi character, his face kept coming to me. I, it was He looked like Javi to me in some way. And when I met him, I thought, that, yeah, there he is. That's the perfect Javi. And the other thing is, He's a genuine film enthusiast. I'm a genuine film enthusiast. And we had so much to talk about. When the cameras weren't rolling, we'd sit on the set together and talk about movies. And I would say, I got this great J-horror film called The Cure. You should watch that. And he would re uh, recommend some Spanish horror films to me. And so we had this good exchange, good flow. And he was also very mysterious because he has a terrific sense of humor, but it's a peculiar sense of humor. I don't even know when he's really being joking or when he's serious. And that's great for the, the performance because you, you want to be left uh, a little off guard by the hobby character. It's unpredictable. Is he dangerous or is he a goofball? And so he kept that energy going. Uh, but he's a really nice man, so I enjoyed working with him. Sounds like a lot of fun. Now, I'm out of here. When they, made, when they come up with the ideas for scenes and they're writing this story, and it's a, it's a version of a character that's kind of an extension of your real life going down a very different path, did you feel anybody kind of being a little hesitant or maybe like, oh, I don't know if he's going to like this idea because this is Nick Cage, even though it's not Nicolas Cage? Um... <laughs> I don't think they were that hesitant. They just they, let you have it. They just let me have it. They just threw it in my face. And I can't, you know, uh, I had to say to them, guys, this is, this is too, this is a bridge too far. This isn't me. I wouldn't do that. I just, I'm not doing that. I'm just not doing it. Like they wanted him to at one point go and say to the CIA agent, I am a good actor and I'll prove it to you. And I'm like, come on. He's going to, he's going to say that to some government jerk. I mean, he doesn't care about, you know, it's not happening. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Now, if you had a million dollars to invite somebody to your birthday party, who are you inviting to the party? <laughs> well, sadly, all the people I would invite are no longer with us. But probably Gene Wilder, uh, Marlon Brando, you know. That would be amazing. What is the weirdest part of fame? When, you have, when, you, when, when you're so well known for so long, what is the kind of weirdest part of that experience? The weirdest part of it, I would say, is the, the, the part is that you never really think you're famous, right? You, you, I don't wake up in the morning and go, wow, I'm a movie star. I don't, that just doesn't happen. And so there have been times where I don't understand why somebody's reacting to me the, the way they are. And I, I don't know, have I done something wrong? And then I remember, oh, they may have seen me in a movie, and then, then I understand. So that's, it's not something you ever really get used to. But having said that, most of my experiences, most of them, like 90% of them, have been positive, have been enthusiastic, and most people genuinely enjoy movies and the characters, and we, we've had some pleasant conversations. What's the, what's the movie you get the most? People tell you that they like that one the most, and they love your performance in that film. What's the most common one you hear from fans? Probably Face Off. Of course. So. And I love that movie, too. And as I let you go, I know you've been asked about Ghost Rider already. I read that online yesterday. But I do want to hear, as a huge Marvel fan myself, you were a Marvel hero before, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Kevin Feige and all them were working on it. Have you ever talked to Kevin and those guys and shared your thoughts or they've shared their thoughts on having you or just, like, gone back and forth at all? Not yet, no. That hasn't happened. Um, but what's interesting is I, nobody asked me about going back to Ghost Rider. I, that was a question that came up, and I, they weren't asking about Ghost Rider. They were asking, how do you, what do you think of the Marvel movies? And I gave my opinion about it. Well, then I have to ask you, what do you think about going back to Ghost Rider? Ghost Rider is an amazing character. I mean, he's a complicated character. It's kind of like, how do you tell the story of Faust within the context of that universe? Because it's a, it's a very philosophical character. I think he's, he, it makes him special from other superheroes. I love it, man. Well, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Enjoy the night. Congratulations. Thank you.